Hello, happy crocheters. This is Lindsay from windingroadcrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute bow purse. If you like this tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's jump right on in. For this project, you do not need a lot. You're going to need some worsted weight size 4 yarn. We're going to want to have a size 5 millimeter or size H crochet hook. You're going to want a button, about a half inch diameter button, yarn needle, scissors, and a measuring tool of some type. So as we go through this pattern, I'm going to give you the instructions for both the child and the adult size. We're going to begin by making a slip knot with your main purse color for the base of the purse. And we are going to chain. For the adult size, you're going to want to chain 43. For the child size, we're going to chain 31. And besides the chain count and some row counts, these uh, two sizes are worked very, very similar. Once you've completed your chain, now we are going to work just simple rows of single crochet. To do this, we're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then we're going to single crochet in every chain across. For the adult size, you should have a total of 42 single crochet. For the child size, you'll have a total of 30 single crochet for every row for this section. After you complete row one, this is actually a really good time to check your gauge. So what you can do instead of actually checking your gauge is just measure the width of your project and you're wanting it to be roughly 11 and a half inches at this moment. And then if you're working a child size, it should be somewhere around seven and a half inches or so. As long as it's close to that, you know your purse is going to come out the right size. So now continuing on to row two, we're just going to chain one and turn. We're going to work basic rows of single crochet. So all we're going to do is single crochet in each chain across. And then you're going to repeat this exact same row until you have a total of 55 rows for the adult size or a total of 41 rows for the child size. So it just depends on the size that you're making. So here I am at the end of row two. And once again, to repeat the row, I'm just going to chain one and turn and single crochet in each stitch across. So here you can see that I finished my 55 rows for the adult size. You can also check your gauge again here and you're looking at having a piece that's roughly about 12 inches tall. If you need it add a row or take away a row, you're more than welcome to do that. Your child size should be roughly nine inches tall at this point. So moving on, we are gonna start a set of decrease rows. And both for the adult size and the child size, the decrease rows are worked exactly the same but you're gonna work a different number of decrease rows in order to make the point at the top of our purse. So what we're gonna do is chain one and turn, and we're going to decrease or single crochet two together in the first two stitches. So pull up a loop in the first stitch, pull up a loop into the second stitch, so you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. That is a single crochet decrease. Now what we're going to do is single crochet in every stitch across until we only have two stitches left at the end of the row. So we're at the end of the row. I have two stitches left and I'm going to work another decrease. So pull a loop up in the first stitch, pull a loop up in the next stitch, three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. That has decreased our row by one stitch on this side and one stitch on the beginning of the row. Now we're gonna chain one and turn. So we're gonna begin the row with a single crochet decrease.
Then we're going to single crochet in each stitch across until we only have two stitches left. When we only have two stitches left, we're going to work a single crochet decrease on this side of our row as well. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to keep repeating this decrease row until you only have two stitches left at the end of your last row. And that's just going to bring us up at a, to a nice point. Of course, for the adult size, you'll have to work more rows because we have more stitches. For the child size, you'll work less rows because it has less stitches, but it's the same process for both. So here you can see I have four stitches left because I've been working those decreases. I'm going to chain one in turn, and in this row, I'm simply going to work two sets of single crochet decreases. So there's our first single crochet decrease. And this is our second single crochet decrease. So this will leave us with the only two stitches at the end of this row. Now in our next row, we are going to be working a buttonhole as well as single crocheting a border around our project. We're going to start by chaining four and turning our work. What we're going to do is skip those two stitches and work into the side of our row. So we have our four chains. We're going to skip these two stitches and work right into the side of our row. So into the side of the first row, we're just going to insert our hook and create a single crochet. Find the side of my next row and create another single crochet. And just keep repeating this all the way until you reach the very bottom of our row. You can see how we have a buttonhole here. It's a good chance to Make sure your button fits. You can always chain more to make a larger buttonhole. But four is just fine for our half inch button. Now when you get to kind of the point where we started the beginning of our decrease rows, we're just going to go around that. It's technically kind of like a corner, but I'm not going to do anything special here. One thing you can do is if you're finding your, double, your single crochets are causing everything to pull a little bit is just to make sure that you're working really loose single crochets because they're just there to give us a nice clean border. So again, this is where we started our double crochet rows. I'm not going to do anything special. I'm just going to continue single crocheting into the side of each row. As you can see, I am trying to keep my single crochets relatively loose so that they're not pulling on the fabric at all. And it's creating a really nice clean edge here. I'm just going to continue this until I reach the very bottom of our rows. So I've reached the bottom corner. To turn the corner, I'm going to chain one, turn so that we are working into the opposite side of our starting chain. And depending on how tight you made that chain, this might be really easy to work into or it might be really difficult. It just depends. But you're going to work one single crochet into the opposite side of every chain. Again, when we reach the next corner, we're going to chain one, turn our corner, skip this first hole because that's the chain, and we're going to go into the side of every row. Working one single crochet into the side of every row just like we did on the other side of our purse. And we're going to do this all the way until we reach the very top of our purse where our buttonhole is. So we've made it back to our buttonhole and now we just want to make the buttonhole stand out a bit. So working into that chain four space we're going to work five single crochet. Once you have your five single crochet work to create a nice buttonhole, we're just going to fasten off, leaving a nice long yarn end. We're going to yarn over and pull that last end through the last loop. And then using a yarn needle, you're actually going to sew it to the very first single crochet of our border row, and that's just going to smooth everything out. 
So this is our base piece. Let's go ahead and make our other pieces before we assemble. Feel free to weave in all your ends at this time as well. So the next piece we're gonna make is the center for the bow. For the adult size with the main color yarn, you're going to chain 17, or for the child size, you're gonna chain 13. Just like our base of our purse, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And this time I am gonna work in the back bumps. This is optional, it just makes one side of your piece look a little nicer. So you're just gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in every chain across. Once you've completed row one, we're just going to repeat this row for row two. So for this, we're going to chain one and turn and you're just gonna continue repeating row two, working one single crochet in every stitch across until you either have a total of six rows for the adult size or a total of four rows for the child size. So here I have finished my six rows for the adult size purse that I'm making. I'm just going to fasten off, leaving a nice long yarn end. We'll use this to sew later. We're just gonna yarn over and pull this through. and the center of your bow piece is complete. Just set it aside for when we're ready to assemble our purse. Now we are going to make the bow of our purse. So just like we've been doing, we're gonna make a slip knot and we're going to start by making a chain. If you're making an adult size, we are gonna chain 45. We may adjust it in a minute and I'll show you how to do that. For the child size, you're gonna start with 33 chain. Once your chain is complete, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. You can single crochet into it any way you like. We will be putting a single crochet border around this piece. And you're gonna single crochet in every chain across, very similar to how we did the base and the bow center. So once you complete row one, we're just gonna check our sizing one more time. And that's because different colors of yarn tend to have different thicknesses. So what you wanna do is just take your row one for your bow, hold it up against the base. Notice that this is a base without the border around it. And I just wanna make sure it's roughly half an inch longer than my base. This one's showing up to be a little bit more than half an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out, I think three single crochets is what I decided on. And what you can actually do at this point, instead of starting your whole project over, I am just going to very carefully pull out those first three chain. So now I think that my bow piece is about half an inch wider than my base. If you have the border on your base, you're probably looking for it to be right about the same size as the base. And so all I'm doing here is just taking out those three chains so I don't have them at the beginning of this little tail at the end of my bow. And you can actually do this by undoing that slip knot we made at the beginning and just very carefully pulling out those chains one at a time. I'm gonna take out the very last chain and once you get that last chain taken out, just pull on your yarn end and it will create a new knot. And that's how you can get rid of extra chain. So let's move on to row two. We're gonna repeat row two just like we've done for several other pieces. We're gonna chain one and turn and single crochet in every stitch across the row. For the adult bow, we are going to repeat row two a total of 22 times. So just like we did with the base, it's just single crochet rows back and forth until we have a total of 22 rows for the adult size. Then if you're working the child size, you're only gonna work a total of 18 rows. So here you can see I have 22 rows completed and the next thing we'll do is to work a single crochet border all the way around our project to give it a nice clean edge. Just chain one, and then we are going to work one single crochet into the side of every row. 
This is very, very similar to what we did with the base of our purse. So I've made it to the bottom and we're just going to turn the corner by chaining one and then we're going to work a single crochet into the opposite side of each starting chain. So this time I did not work into the back bumps and I find it just a little bit easier to work into the opposite side of the starting chain. I'm just going to single crochet in each chain across and when you reach the other side we're going to chain one and turn. Skip that first little hole that's actually your chain and just work a single crochet into the side of every row until you reach your next corner. So we've reached the last corner. We're going to chain one and turn the corner again and this time we're just going to work a single crochet into the top of each stitch in this row, which is just the top of row 22. Work this all the way across the top of this row. When you reach the very end, the very first corner, you're going to chain one and slip stitch to the very first single crochet and then you're just going to fasten off by creating a chain and pulling your yarn end all the way through. So that is our bow piece. We're going to go ahead and show you how to assemble everything. Here are the three pieces we need. We have the center of our bow. We have the white bow piece. And you will notice that the that border row does kind of have a right side and a wrong side. So you want to make sure that the right side is always the one facing up. Take your base piece. Make sure that the right side is facing up just based off of that border. We're going to place our bow piece directly below the decrease rows. And yes, this is going to be too wide. We are just going to make sure that we sew the two sides even to each other. It's going to leave a little bit of a pucker in the middle and that is okay. I'm going to use what they call a running stitch to sew both sides together. So I am using white yarn at this moment. I'm just going to start at the top and so back and forth in a zigzag pattern through our two pieces of crochet. And I will do this on both sides of the bow. And then I will knot my ends and weave them in. Now that both edges are sewn together and I've woven in my ends, I am going to go ahead and use the yarn ends on that center bow section to make the bow. So I'm just going to pinch my bow three times in the center to kind of scrunch it together. And then holding this with my fingers, I'm going to take my center bow piece, go underneath the bow, pull the edges to the top of the bow, and I'm just going to use a whip stitch to sew these two ends together. A whip stitch is just where you go from the bottom to the top and then repeat the process all the way across. And when I get right to the end, I'm just going to knot my two yarn ends together. You can definitely weave them in, but I am being a little lazy, so I'm just going to knot them three times and clip them. And then I'm going to take my piece and very carefully turn it so that the seam is on the back of my project. And our bow is complete. So now we're going to turn this flat piece into a bag by folding up the back side. Just want to line it up again at the bottom of the decrease rows. And what we're going to do is we're going to whip stitch these two uh, main base colors together. And we're going to do it in a way where we actually don't go through the white section so that we don't have any blue stitches on top of our bow. So I'm using the blue yarn or the teal yarn here, just going from the bottom out the top, doing a whip stitch.
And right now at the bottom I have a little section that's just blue on blue so I don't have to worry about doing anything special. Once I reach this section where the white is, I'm going to carefully go under the blue, under the blue again, and come out before I go into the white. That way my stitches stay behind the white and my bow stays completely white with no blue stitches in the center of it. So then I'm just going to finish whip stitching up this side and then I will whip stitch up the other side and weave in my ends. So here it is completely whip stitched together and I'm just going to weave in my end. The nice thing is those three layers of single crochet does add a lot of stability to this purse. It's not completely stiff, um, but it is pretty stiff for being crochet. So I'm just going to make a knot to kind of secure this as best I can. And then I'm going to take my needle and weave in my ends. I recommend weaving them in back and forth at least three times. So there we have that. I'll weave in my other ends also up my other side. The next thing you're going to do after you sew both sides is just take the decrease rows, fold it down, use that to gauge where you want to put your button. So I'm just going to grab my button, place it right here, and then using some yarn I'm going to stitch that in place as well. Now this purse is perfectly wonderful as it is as a clutch purse, but we can also add a wristlet strap or a long strap to be able to carry this purse in a different way. So let's go ahead and make a wristlet strap for my adult purse. Now I put all the chaining on the top for you. So an adult wristlet is going to be 45 chains. An adult long strap to let it go up over your shoulder is going to be 150 for an adult. The child wristlet is going to be 31 chains. Or the child's long strap will be about 74 chains. But the thing is, the chain count really doesn't matter. So feel free to make a chain as long as you want it for your purse. So I'm going to chain out 45. And when I get to the end of my chain, I am going to work in the third chain from the hook. I am going to work into the back bumps. And this time I'm going to work half double crochets just so that we only have to work one row. You could also work double crochets right now if you want, but I think the half double crochets look really nice. So I'm going to work one half double crochet into every chain along this entire row. doesn't matter how many chains you work, just work one half double crochet in each. And then we will be done with this little strap. Once you have your strap completed, we're just going to fasten off can leave a long yarn in for sewing. Since I'm doing a wristlet strap, we're only going to be sewing on one side, so this works for me. So I am just going to thread one of those yarn ends on a needle and grab my purse. I'm going to flip the purse over and I'm just going to sew it right on the inside of my purse, kind of tucked on the inside. And this is so that if you want, you can actually tuck your strap into your purse and use it as a clutch. Of course, if you're making a long strap, you're going to do this on both sides of your purse and you will want to make sure that you don't twist the strap before you sew it. So I'm just going to fold my wristlet strap in half, tuck it into the inside of my purse and use my yarn end and needle and secure it in place. You probably want to make three or four stitches at least to really secure this in place because everything you put into this bag, all of that weight is going to be relying on the stitches you make right now. And then when you're done sewing, what I like to do is knot my first yarn end with the other yarn end and then weave in my ends. The knot just really helps make everything a lot more secure. Of course, once again, I'm going to be a little lazy and I'm just going to knot this several times and clip the yarn ends, but it's better to weave them in if you have the time. So here you have it. This is our completed bag. You can tuck that strap in if you don't want to use it. I really hope you liked this video tutorial and that you'll be interested in checking out some of my other video tutorials. And as always, thank you so much for watching.